Welcome. Welcome to Derbyshire. And more specifically, the top of the chain of three reservoirs here at Lineker. So we're west of Chesterfield and we're just to the east of the boundary of the Glorious Peak District. So what am I here for? Come out for a walk and possibly a wild camp. Definitely a wild camp. The weather is a little bit hit and miss, as it was the last time I camped in the Peak District. But today it's looking a little bit better. There's some really heavy rain in the area and there's also some strong winds at the moment. But around about two, three o'clock, the winds are due to die down. It's around about one o'clock. So I've had quite a leisurely start this morning. The plan is, I'm walking along the chain of reservoirs here. We're gonna head up onto the moors to Shilato Wood and then down to Gardam's Edge to have a little bit of an explore around there. And that is hopefully, fingers crossed, if there's, no, if there's no cattle up there, that's the spot for tonight's wild camp. I've got my hammock, I've got my tarp, and I'm in good spirits. Let's do it. After following the river up the valley for a while, I'm now starting the climb up towards Grange Hill and to the trig point there. I've passed it so many times in the car, but you can't officially bag it, even though it's at the side of the road. You've got to walk there. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do today. You can almost see the crooked spire there. That sort of area. Grange Hill Trig Point. And it's good to finally be here on foot. Some fantastic views back down towards Chesterfield and Aula Bar off to the northwest. Big Moor, and I'm also heading towards Shilato Woods now, which is off to the west. Welcome to Shilato Woods, a very small piece of woodland here, but I've come to see the 13th century cross. Now it's believed to be a way marker erected by monks to help travellers. And uh, I've been wanting to visit here for quite some time. I've driven past it on the road, but uh, it's finally good to be here. You might just be able to see the deer up on Big Moor there. As we've got plenty of time, before we head up onto Gardam's Edge, I think we'll head to Birchen. Welcome to the second trig point of the day, up on Birchin Edge. And the views really are fantastic from here. Big moor in the distance there, white edge, and then, why is the name just gone? <laughs> Kerber. <laughs> Kerber and Baslow Edge over there. Just behind me now is Nelson's Monument and the three ships. So we'll have a wander down. And this is Nelson's Monument, standing proud here on Birchin Edge. And just behind me are the three ships, Victory, Defiance and the Royal Sovereign. Down in the valley there is Robin Hood and the Robin Hood Inn. And we've got Gibbet Moor and Brampton East Moor off in the distance there. Just over the hill there is the Chatsworth Estate. The next location we're going to explore 
is the woodland just down there and some quite historic landmarks on the eastern side of Gardam's Edge. The first place we've come to in between Gardam's and Birchen is the Gardam's roundhouses. Now there's believed to be around about 20 or 30 roundhouses that are Bronze Age or Early Iron Age and during um, archaeological excavations and digs there have been arrowheads and various other things found here. There were some quite large roundhouses here and there is believed to have been quite a big community living between the two edges here. This little feature here, not that you can see it at the moment because it's quite overgrown, is the Gardam's three pits and they're around about 70 centimetres deep, lined with clay and they're believed to be perhaps a water source or something to do with like a ritual that's performed here. But you might be able to see it in the centre there, there looks to be some sort of orienteering event going on today. I've seen a few runners darting in and out of the trees trying to um, put their little tracker on top of the, the posts there. But it really is a nice quiet place today. All I've seen is two or three runners. This is quite an interesting one. This is the standing stone here, and it's believed to be a 4,000 year old astronomical marker. Scientists believe that um, this angle here points directly at the sun during midsummer. Behind me is part of the Gardam's enclosure, also called Meg's Wall. It's around about 600 metres long and it varies in uh, depth from about 5 metres to about 10 metres and in places it's a metre high. And it's one of those things that's believed to have been some sort of um, enclosure for trading or a meeting place of some sort but no one really knows. This one is perhaps the most interesting of all. This is the cup and ring stone, a stone carving here on Gardam's Edge. But all is not as it seems. In 1996, this stone was replaced. The original was buried. Archaeologists, archaeologists believe that the uh, original stone was weathering away, so something needed to be done to protect it. So, as I was saying, not all is as it seems. That is actually a hollow resin replica of the original stone, but you wouldn't believe it to look at it. It's a very convincing replica. You wouldn't know until you tapped it that it was resin. So the reason it's called the cup and ring stone is that this is a cup just here. I'll tap it again. I'll take my foot off it. <laughs> and these are the rings. Ten rings in each circle. I've been wanting to come and camp here for quite some time now and it's been a long time since I've used the hammock so I thought I'd bring the hammock tonight and try and find somewhere stealth and secluded to uh, spend the night. The wind, as predicted, has died down thankfully so that's all good. The sky is clearing just a little bit and it's really great to be here. In places like this it really does make you think what it must have been like in that sort of period in history, the Bronze Age or Early Iron Age. There is so much to find out here. And we're just above the, the Derwent Valley, which is obviously home to some of the, the wonders of the Industrial Age. But going further back, you've got things like this and many stone circles and barrow burial mounds in the, uh, in the area. Just over on Brampton East Moor there, you've got Hobhurst's House, a monument that's protected by the English heritage. I visited that recently um, in one of my videos from the last summer, I dare say, so fairly recently. But as I was saying, 
it's fascinating. Not only have we got the glorious landscape, the edges, the moorland, the mountains, we've also got lots of history to come and discover as well. <laughs> Peak District tourism video here. <laughs> right, let's try and find somewhere to pitch. I think this will do. We're about 20 metres or so west of the Cup and Ringstone. It would have been great, you know, to have uh, camped just down there. And I'm always thinking about thumbnails as well for the video, so it would have been nice to have got that in focus with the hammock in the background, but it's quite, uh, quite exposed out there. And there is a footpath running through two trees that look hammockable. So I won't go there, just in case it's an animal track or anything like that. I don't really want to be disturbed during the night by deer or <laughs> anything else that decides to walk through. But this looks nice. These true two trees here look far enough apart, so we're just off the back of the edge here as well, and the wind is coming this way, so there's some taller stones over there that might shelter me a little bit more. Okay, let's get it pitched. So there we are, the DD hammock. I've uh, hung it quite low, just been sat in it, and I'm around about 30 centimeters off the floor, so that'll do nicely, I think. Ah, this is the life. That's about it. Might need a bit of a tweak to uh, make it a bit tighter, but um, I've chosen the, the lower option this evening to uh, stay out of view of the path that runs along the edge there and just to kind of blend in with the ground here. <laughs> blend in as well as I can do with a... Uh, quite a bright green uh, tarp, the Terra Nova Adventure 2. It should be a nice comfortable night's sleep. It's been requested many times over the years and the last time I did this a bit of a kit load out was, now let me think, around about three years ago and you know what it's probably not changed since then. Bear in mind it's budget kit, it's not that expensive, but it's standing the test of time, which is always good. My main winter sleeping bag, which I will admit does need upgrading, is the Van Gogh Ultralight 1300. And I bought this bag as well, which is an old bag that I've sometimes used in summer, and that's the Van Gogh Ultralight 300. I'm using that as an under blanket for the DD hammock just there, and that would be my main bag. Jet boil, trusty jet boil, and in the little airtight bag there, <laughs> which I've just opened a little bit, is my Berghouse down jacket, some thick socks, food. Where is it? Just down there. First aid kit, as always. My waterproof trousers. Got a couple more bungees there. Plenty of water. Tripod. In there, I've got head torch and batteries and battery pack for the phone, but that's about it, really tried to uh, bring things just that I use on a regular basis and try not to go over the top. Just inside there is my Gerber multi-tool as well. But other than that, quite light. I never never weigh my uh, kit so I couldn't tell you how much it weighs but yeah. I can't fault any of the kit really. Although this thing I could probably do going with going to the Rab factory shop and upgrading that because when it gets anything below zero, it's not great. It just say comfort three, limit 10, extreme 28. <laughs> but you know what? Anything below three degrees and it's not great. Tonight, it should be around about eight degrees, I think. So we should be good. My girlfriend Lisa and I were joking earlier on actually. And while I'm on the subject, thank you Lisa for dropping me off earlier on at Linica Reservoir. <laughs> Very kind of you. Um, all the kit that I've got is old, pretty much. I dare say these trousers are about, about three or four years old. This, you could probably look back at some of the old videos and not think that any time has passed because I'm always wearing the same clothes, it seems. This uh, trusty Berghaus hoodie, a firm favourite. Not the thickest, but it's a good layer. And I've had this coat a while now, these boots I've had for ages. The trusty Terra Nova tarp. The uh, 
the one that creates the flying diamond formation and the excess I think I bought the excess before I went to Thailand in 2015 and while well, I'm talking about Thailand as well or Asia I've got two little uh, bands on there and I bought these uh, in Cambodia there was a someone begging on the street and we all bought one and I've got them both attached to my bag and they've been attached to the bag since we left Cambodia and I've really wandered off on the subject now but a few days ago I think it was last Saturday I met Darren so hi Darren I met him in uh, Tesco's in Claycross and a guy that um, we didn't quite catch his name he, we met him at Thomas Irvin's the uh, equine stores and the reason why I mentioned Lisa a minute ago it was quite funny actually because when we met Darren um, after we'd spoken to him or I'd spoken to him I said to Lisa jokingly obviously I said oh I didn't I didn't um, introduce you because you don't get any speaking parts that's quite a running joke actually she always claims that I edit her out of the video so she doesn't get any speaking parts so <laughs> When um, we met the gentleman at the equine store, he actually said to me, it was your girlfriend that I recognized first, so she's not let me hear the end of that one. <laughs> so it's really good to be out again. And while I'm swinging this Canon 7D around, it really does get uh, quite heavy. <laughs> but it is good to be out again. I'm quite looking forward to a relaxing night. So while we're in here, there is a zip inside this version of the the DD hammock and I've put my uh, old sleeping bag in there the uh, official under blankets do sling underneath but um, I find that works quite well as well you know you can put your mattress in there or you can get inside it if you wish but uh, it's just an added layer quite comfortable actually before the light finally fades, I'm gonna get some food on the go. I've not tried that before, but it should be nice. Heinz lentil curry. Let's get it burning. It's now around about 1740 and the light is fading fast. So this might be the last bit of footage I can capture without head torches with the cannon now. The ISO is turned right up, so it could be a little bit grainy. I'm pleased that spring is Oh, it seems so close now. It's now the 9th of February, so it's on its way. We had snow last week, and over the last few days the temperature has warmed up, so there there's, doesn't seem to be any snow left in the Peak District at the moment. It's now about half past eight and I've just been relaxing in the hammock watching um, series one of extras Ricky Gervais while the time lapses have been happening. You know what this is the first time I've actually slept inside the uh, the DD hammock you see above there usually I just sleep on top of it and put my um, under blanket or uh, mattress inside here for extra padding but this is the first time I've slept inside and it's, it's quite comfortable actually. I don't feel like I'm going to fall out anymore. Okay, so I think I'll watch a bit more of another, another episode of Extras and then I'm going to hit the hay, I think. So I'll see you in the morning. It happened. It finally happened. After 200 plus videos, this time I wasn't so lucky. The trusty 7D let me down a wee bit or the memory card, I'm not quite sure. So the footage didn't save properly. So I'm thinking it's me the memory card. I've tried to recover deleted files, but there's nothing there. So everything on the Sunday, which was the 9th, the waking, waking up in the hammock, it's gone. <laughs> so I thought I would film a little piece of video now to explain to you the reason why this video has ended quite abruptly. So I'm out on the... Uh, the usual lunchtime walk with the work crew and the morning I woke up it was quite a good night's sleep actually I'll be honest the hammock was really comfortable the tarp leaked a little bit so I think I need to replace that 
but it was a really great night out nonetheless. It rained from around about 4am in the morning. After that, I had a very slow start. It was chucking it down on my way back to the Robin Hood Inn and my girlfriend very kindly picked me up from there at around 9am. So hopefully um, I might be able to get one in before the end of this month. Managed to keep up my goal of camping once a month. So we'll see. As always, thanks for watching. This has been quite an abrupt end, but I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm not going to let it bother me. I was sat there until gone midnight last night trying to recover the footage, but nothing. And I thought, I'll bring the camera with me to record something today while we're walking around, but it won't work. I think the battery's dead, so I'm using the phone. Right. Okay, so I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.